Hello! Glad I came early, got a great seat. Yes, Dad, you are the first into the chat. Um, hello, welcome to Jazz Brunch. My name is Abigail and this is my husband. I'm Quentin. We're the Flowerses, also known as Team Joe York. Don't worry about it. Um, if this is your first time, hi from Falls Church, Virginia. Oh, hey. wonderful. Thank you for joining. Um, so this person has beaten us to, I'm sorry, one moment, I'm going to close the door here. Well, it's getting some noise from outside. Um, if this is your first time here, I want you to know it's a little bit more fun if you are logged into your YouTube account and can participate in the live chat um, because we will, we will have a trivia section um, and would love to hear from you, uh, especially we would love to know where you're watching from and, um, and if this is your first time. So if this is your first time joining us, would you let us know in the chat right now? Take a second to uh, get logged in. And um, I'm gonna be back in 10 seconds because there's sound coming from another room in the house. We've got people watching from Virginia, I know. We got some loved ones and family, and we really appreciate that. Uh, we got some people in Texas that are watching along. Um, but it's especially fun. We've had a friend in Poland yes. uh, tune in quite regularly, and we really appreciate Woodlands, that. Woodlands, Texas, yes. All right. Certainly not the first time. Yeah. Thank you so much to appreciate our consistent that. viewers as well. All right, we're going to get started with one of my very favorite Dallas, Orange, Texas. Hi, Aunt Debbie. Mm. Hi, Alexandra. Um, many return listeners. Very grateful for you guys. We are going to get started with one of my very favorite songs, all of the songs you'll hear today were written by Jimmy Van Heusen, who is one of my favorite uh, composers. So we're going to get started. set list slash info sheet 
Today you're going to get some bonus knowledge about Jimmy Van Heusen. Um, hello from California. Thank you so much for watching. Um, so Jimmy Van Heusen was born Edward Chester Babcock and uh, born in 1913 and he um, throughout his life was known to his friends as Chester or Chet um, or apparently Chesa. Um, so he was a, a very prominent uh, composer in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Um, so in his lifetime, Jimmy Van Heusen, born Edward Chester Babcock, he wrote over 800 songs, 50 of them became standards. He had music in over 220 films. He had 14 Oscar nominations, four wins, one Emmy win, three Grammy nominations, three Tony nominations, and three Golden Globe nominations. So he was a real slacker, and you'll hear that in the music today. No, he was amazing. Um, I forgot to say, uh, there. if you would like to tip for today's concert, there's information in the description of this video for how to do so. Please do not feel pressured uh, to tip. We have been, um, we have received a lot of generosity. We are doing fine. Um, but if you enjoy this and would like to tip, we welcome that as well. There's information uh, in the description of the video. Um, if you would take a moment to click the thumbs up uh, underneath the video, give it a little like. That helps me out on the on the YouTubes. Um, so that song we just played, I Thought About You, was written in 1939 with lyrics by Johnny Mercer, who obviously is a big name. So he was an established lyricist um, that Jimmy Van Heusen was able to work with. Um, also, so to explain the name change, when he was a teenager, um, Chester Babcock would cut school to be a radio DJ. So he couldn't very well announce to the whole city, it's me, Chester Babcock, cutting school. So he had to come up with a new name. And so he was sitting with one of his buddies and they literally looked out the window and saw a billboard for Van Heusen shirt collars and said, ooh, that's classy, that'll be my name. So that's where Van Heusen came from. And as for James or Jimmy, uh, the friend he was with said, well, my favorite cousin's name is Jimmy. And that's how they came up with it. I think it's a great name. They, uh, he really lucked into a good one. Um, so in his early life, um, he started out um, sort of as a house pianist for Tin Pan Alley. Um, and so he was partnered with different songwriters in that period of his career. And that's also when he met Frank Sinatra, who would stay his friend for the rest of his life. Um, so they were just both young and hungry in New York. And, uh, and, uh, so the late thirties was when he was kind of ramping up his songwriting career. So, um, that was 1939 with Johnny Mercer. This next song, uh, is called Darn That Dream. And it was also written in 1939 with, uh, I think his name's Eric DeLange, another more established lyricist. Um, and it became a hit when it was recorded by Benny Goodman in 1940. Um, and I read that in, from 1930 to 1940 alone, Jimmy Van Heusen wrote 60 songs. So this was a very prolific time in his life. So here is Darn That Dream. Sit 
Yes, so last Saturday, my sweet husband, Quentin, uh, abandoned me for some, uh, well, not abandoned me. Truth ditched, be told. I think, was yeah, the word. Yeah, he ditched me. Uh, he had a safe, socially distant work opportunity, and we said, yes, please, we'll take the money. So, um, so we're grateful for that work opportunity, but glad that he's back this week. We are going to, uh, oh, it's in my pocket, start with our first quick Lightning round of trivia. Uh -oh. So please play along in the comments. I'm gonna I'm, make what? I noticed the, uh, the little nerdy key thing in Darn That Dream. That what relates to uh, Dream a Little Dream. Oh. On the keys, key center. Mm. Comment that below if you have perfect pitch <laughs> and you know what we're talking about. Trivia question number one. Uh oh. What is the world's smallest country? Smallest country by size, size like area, yeah. cubic, yeah. Yeah. Like square footage. Yeah. Not probably not cubic. Um, oh. Somebody got it right, right already. Yeah, got it right. Well, you can't. You can't see. So. I'm blinder <laughs> than a bat. Um, that's not true. Um, I want to. S the Ivory Coast. I don't know. Vatican City. Vatican City. My people of out course. there know Vatican yeah. City. We always forget. Right. Teeny tiny little inside right. of Rome. Mm -hmm. Which NFL team's name was inspired by a famous writer? A famous writer. Just to really pair up two categories I don't know anything about. <laughs> Sports. Literature. Um, Ooh, he's got famous, the Yeah, they know it. Famous writer. Is that Kevin? Kevin no, Kevin? no. Oh, okay. L literally Someone everyone. Is much smarter. Writer. Okay. Yeah, oh man. <laughs> wow. So in the state of Maryland, yes. the Baltimore the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens, and apparently their their mascots are named Edgar Allen and Pup. Ah, that's fun. I assume that they're Ravens. I don't know what the the physical form of their mascots are. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Question, Question number three. Ooh, this could really cause some strife. Good. <laughs> Here we go. Who is the Lord referred to in the title of Lord of the Rings? Wow. Okay, so a couple. Of the Lord of the Rings. Who's gonna win my heart out here? <sighs> yeah, I because I I feel like the obvious answer is Gandalf because he's like the holy figure, but he's not. I'm gonna turn away so you can't see my face. But he's not responsible for him, so I'm gonna go with Frodo. Right? He's the one that's responsible for everything. No, my people know. Man. Well, I guess I'm not your people. You are my favorite person. All right. But you don't know this very important answer. No. So technically it's Peter Sauron. Peter Jackson. Yeah, it's Sauron. I would also, my, I feel like that's a little bit open to, an, it's a little bit of a philosophical question. Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a good answer. Also true. Yeah. How do we know? So true. What is up? Um, 
I feel like it's a little bit of a philosophical question. Who is the Lord of the Rings? And does that mean wielding the power of the ring or resisting the power of the ring? Right. So right. I'll let you figure that out for yeah. yourself. And we're going to play some more music. Um, so this one is perhaps the first Jamie Van Heusen song that I fell in love with. And it's called It Could Happen to You. And uh, I learned this song because Chet Baker has a recording um, where he does a vocal solo and it's it's like a perfect first vocal solo to transcribe. Um, it's very it's very musical. It's not overly dense like a lot of you know like bebop um, instrumental solos um, would be really really challenging. Um, and this is just a perfect like very melodic solo. Um, it is a bit rangy, so you'll get to hear that. But anyway. This song is called It Could Happen to You. Um, in the 40s, Jimmy Van Heusen started a very long songwriting par partnership with, I think his mm, first name is Johnny Burke, but the last name is Burke. And they wrote uh, like a million songs together. Very, um, very prolific partnership. And um, it's interesting that the other lyricist relationship that was very significant in Jimmy Van Heusen's life was with Sammy Kahn. And that was later on. Um, they wrote a lot of Frank Sinatra's hits. I don't love the music from that writing period. Uh, it, it's great music. It's just not my music. So I'm a big fan of the Van Heusen Burke catalog. Um, so this is one of those songs. Uh, and, and Burke was uh, Bing Crosby's favorite lyricist. So this gave Jimmy Van Heusen the in to um, write a lot of music that Bing Crosby made famous. So he wrote music for 23 Bing Crosby movies. If that doesn't rocket you to stardom in the 1940s. <laughs> anyway, so this is It Could Happen to You, uh, including a transcription of uh, Chet Baker's vocal solo. Another great version of that song that you could look up is um, by, I think, 
Benny Benack the Third, but it was for like a, a vocal competition years ago. So there's this epic YouTube video of him improvising on this song, and it sort of uh, really propelled his career. It's a great video. Benny Benack singing It Could Happen to You. Um, once again, if you're just joining us, if you would take a moment to click the little thumbs up under this video, that would be um, just fabulous. Also, if you have anyone in your life who enjoys um, music or trivia punctuated by a lot of music or historical facts about dead composers, um, I would love for you to share this link with those people in your life. Um, whether that's now or it'll be, um, aww. Uh, this will be available to watch later, so feel free to share after the fact. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Our next song, oh, so another fun fact about Jimmy Van Heusen. So he was a pilot and really loved flying. Um, so when World War II came around, he was too old for, I forget which branch of the service, um, I guess Air Force, but he, he was too old to get into it. So he flew as a test pilot for the Lockheed Corporation during World War II, but he did it under his birth name, Edward Chester Babcock. Um, and so like, as far as anyone knows, the Lockheed Corporation didn't know that he was a famous songwriter. The Hollywood people didn't know that he was a test pilot because who's going to hire someone to write music for a movie if they are constantly risking <laughs> plane crashes? So uh, he's, he had these like dual lives during World War II, um, but pretty, pretty cool. So this next song is called But Beautiful. It's another Van Heusen and Burke song. Um, it was written in 1947. Uh, and in 1948, both Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra charted um, with recordings of this song. Um, I think that's such an interesting aspect of music of yesteryear, that at any given time, you could have up to four people, or I'm sure more, but, but you could have several people charting with the same song. And I don't know, it's just so, it's very interesting, like <clears throat> not necessarily the song having you know, there's there's more acknowledgement for the songwriters if it's not automatically attributed just to the superstar. Um, so, very interesting. Uh, yes, But Beautiful is the name of the song. I think that's what you're asking, Mom. Um, and all said and done, Frank Sinatra recorded over 85 Jimmy Van Heusen songs. They were best friends, um, knew each other for a very long time, and um, yeah, fun fact. So, this is But Beautiful. What's very interesting to me, and maybe to a, fun, uh, a couple of you, is that um, this song has, it uses the same opening um, chord progression as It Could Happen To You. Of course, Jimmy Van Heusen didn't write the lyrics to either of these songs, um, but it's musically quite similar and lyrically very different. So you, uh, you will hear it in a moment, so. Um, Um, I'll be last for Oh 
a very beautiful song, in my opinion. Um, I really wish I could figure out a way to medley those songs, but uh, I think it would only work instrumentally. Anyway, but beautiful. Jimmy Van Heusen. Great. Thank you so much. Um, Alright, a few more rapid fire trivia questions. Who was the first president to live in the White House? Neil Armstrong. No, uh, New York. Adams. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. How did you know? Texas Public Schools, baby! Okay, uh, well, none of you get to answer because... <laughs> lightning round! Yeah, lightning round. He nailed it. Okay, all right. This is, this, this question is for, you can't answer this right away, for right. a very specific subset of viewers. What was the first toy to be advertised on television? Television. So this puts us after... World War II. <laughs> yeah. Your mom says KDISD. Yes, yeah, KDISD. Never enough high schools. Um, yeah, yeah, I actually don't know. I think um, it's like 13 and a half now. Um, so, advertise on TV a toy, a right? Toy. For children, we're presuming. Not like an inflatable pool or something like Mr. stretchy like Mr. that. Mr. Jeopardy got it right. Well, I'm not looking at Mr. I know, Jeopardy. I appreciate that. Um, I want to say like a fire truck or something like that. Just like a... Or, no! Was it the Slinky? No. That would be great, though. Okay. It's Mr. Well, Potato Head! Wow. You of all people. For some reason. I should have got that. <laughs> all right. That's what we got. Great. Okay. This one, I... I don't think my friend Alex is watching, but she... This is for Alex, and maybe she'll watch later. Squab is the name given to the young of which bird? I'm sorry, which bird? Squab. Yeah. Is a baby what? Okay. Um, like a kid for a kangaroo, right? But well, a joey. Right. A kid, kid for a goat. Yeah. The Australian goat. <laughs> We're doing great. <laughs> the Australian <is> goat. <laughs> That is um, <laughs> I want to say penguin for some reason, but no, that can't be right. That would um, be cute. Flamingo is the first one that popped into my head. It's just a pigeon. Just a pigeon. Just a pigeon. Wow. Well, yeah, people didn't seem passionate about that one, so I'm giving away the answer. They're important to the world. As All right. Well, I guess. This one. This is our bonus question, okay. and this I picked this because I think this is the funniest. Maybe not the dumbest trivia question, but it's it's very specific. Cool. And so if you know this, I absolutely want a, a full history on why. What country produced the most strawberries in, in 2016? 2016. What country produced Strawberry. the most strawberries in 2016? Um, what conditions are good for strawberries? Fertile soil. Ain't I that assume, the eternal question? I assume that has something to do with it. Um, you know, I'm assuming it's not the U.S. of A. I, I misread um, someone's guess of Mexico and thought it said Missouri, and I was going to give it to Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> Just nice. for creativity. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share the answer. China? Okay. I did, Vatican City. Great, great <laughs> guess. Um, according to the internet, I didn't do any research to validate this. According to the internet, it's China. So uh, now you'll have that in the back pocket for the next time someone asks, and they will, next time someone asks who produced the most strawberries in 2016. Important year. This next song is called Like Someone in Love. And it was, it's another Van Heusen and Burke tune. Um, written in 1944 uh, for a film that came out in 1945, and Bing Crosby charted with it in 1945. It's called Like Someone in Love. I think this is one that had four different people charting with it at the same time. That might be the one where I read it, but... Okay, here we go. Time to play music. Lately, 
I find myself out gazing at stars, hearing guitars like someone in love. Sometimes the things I do astound me. I seem to walk as though I had wings. I bump into things like someone in love. Each time I look at you, I'm limp as a glove and feeling like some. I seem to walk as though I had wings bump into things like someone in love Each time I look at you I'm limp as a glove and feeling like someone And I am in love with you. That's not nice. Isn't Quentin so good at bass? Thanks, baby. If you think Quentin is so good at bass, leave us a comment. Gross. Or smash that thumbs up button. Lame. Thumbs down. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> He's going to tank my... <laughs> um, actually, it all is good. Anyway. Yeah. Any um, response at all is good. So Even if they hate If you think it. I'm medium good at bass, comments <laughs> share this video with a friend to make fun of yeah, it yeah um why is it open it just flipped i flipped like to the wrong page all right we just have one more song for you it's um, a doozy it is i'm sorry to end on a sad one we usually end with um a little more up tempo but this song's really beautiful and it came last chronologically so felt right um so uh before i get into that i just want to say one more time thank you so much for watching um we would so appreciate it if you would share this link with someone in your life who loves music um don't feel like you have to uh never mind i'm rewind thank you so much for watching if you'd like to tip um there's information in the description of the video we will be here every week at 11 a.m for the first uh, 11 a.m central uh for the foreseeable future if you can't get enough of us there's a whole playlist of the previous well seven out of the eight previous jazz brunches are on youtube one of them's private because it was ticketed um if you want to subscribe if you love what we're doing you can subscribe to my channel that would be great um you can visit my website abigailflowersmusic.com uh to learn more i don't know if you want to um, I'm on Facebook. Elaine, thank you for watching. Um, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, everywhere it's Abigail Flowers Music. Um, you can go follow Quentin on Instagram for pictures of um, meat yeah. and bread. Every uh, three months you'll get a sweet, sweet picture. That is it will be blurry. Entirely true. Um, any last things I need to say? I think that's it. We're going to do um, themes from here on so um i will i'll share a poll at some point for uh what our next theme should be um i guess that's it thank you so much so this is here's that rainy day so um to finish telling the story of jimmy van Heusen's life in a very um brief form so 
he had this song right in like this golden period with Johnny Burke. Um, they wrote a ton of music together. And so later, um, when Johnny Burke uh, lost his health and, and was not uh, able to collaborate anymore, um, <clears throat> Jimmy Van Heusen's main collaborator was Sammy Kahn. And so they had a, they also had a ton of hits, a lot of things like um, Come Fly With Me, um, for big Frank Sinatra tunes. Um, again, not really my style for performance, but really beautiful music. Um, so Jimmy Van Heusen remained close. Oh, and Sammy Kahn had been part of that same group coming in, up in New York at the same time. So they had known Frank Sinatra, Sammy Kahn, Jimmy Van Heusen. They'd known each other from way back. Um, and so Jimmy Van Heusen and Frank Sinatra were great friends through the rest of their lives. And they're actually buried, like Jimmy Van Heusen and his wife are buried next to Frank Sinatra. Um, so Jimmy Van Heusen was apparently not a very handsome man, but was great with the ladies and did not actually settle down until he was 56 years old. Um, but then he stayed married to his wife until he passed away in 1990. Um, so they were married for 21 years. Um, she was 12 years his senior. Crit? Just like I'm you were 12 years my senior. <laughs> a little over 12 months. Anyway, um, he was inducted into the Songwriting Hall of Fame in 1971 and often said that was um, his greatest honor. And this is a man who had four Oscars and three Grammy nominated. Anyway, um, songwriting, yes, a May, May, December. I read something that referred to it as an October, December romance, and I thought that was pretty funny. They're both old, but one's older. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say about him, except that Jimmy Van Heusen's family, um, his, his estate, they um, are in Nashville. So I've actually met, I, I have his business card here, I've met Brooke Babcock, who I think is Jimmy Van Heusen's nephew, um, but they, so they have like a bunch of, um, well the Van Heusen estate is very connected with the Nashville Jazz Workshop. Um, which you also should look into. They're offering online classes right now. So no matter where you are in the world, you can take um, classes. E even if you're just a listener, you can take classes with the Nashville Jazz Workshop online, which is a fabulous opportunity. But the Van Heusen Estate will allow um, Van Heusen classes at the Jazz Workshop to come see original manuscripts. Like there's Come Fly With Me is like the original paper is there. So that's pretty wild. Um, so shout out to the Van Heusen family for being so uh, involved and, and um, generous with the jazz community here. So this last song is called Here's That Rainy Day, written in 1953, again with Burke. Um, Sinatra recorded it in 1959 and performed it throughout the rest of his career. <clears throat> and um, Johnny Carson said that here, Sinatra's recording of Here's That Rainy Day was his favorite ballad. So when Johnny Carson passed away in 2005, um, they played this song on Late Night with David Letterman as a tribute to Johnny Carson. So um, that's probably on YouTube somewhere. I don't know. We'll look it up later. I learned this song to sing it with the Music City Big Band led by Casey Brefka uh, a couple years ago. And uh, it's a doozy. I hope you enjoy. And if you don't enjoy, you shouldn't be here. You don't have to be here unless you're having fun. So I hope you're having fun. I should have saved those leftover dreams Funny, but here's that rainy day Side. 
that rainy day is here. Here's that rainy day. Thank you so much. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. One last thing that just occurred to me, Diane Nalini is here in the comments. She does a weekly um, ukulele, jazz vocal, and upright bass live stream of her own. So if you enjoy this, you will love what Diane is doing. So um, Diane, if you are still here and would post a link in the chat, that would be great. It's at five, but I don't remember if that's Central or Eastern or if I'm completely off. But um, you can just look up Diane Nalini, N-A-L-I-N-I. Yes, okay, she's gonna post a link um, and make sure to check that out. You can, and they do it every week. So if you're not available tonight, you can watch it back later or you can tune in another week. Um, but if you like what we're doing, you will definitely like what she's doing. So um, thank you guys so much. We will be back here next week. <laughs>